we are going to take just this plain ice cake and we're going to turn it into this with just a few tips. What we're going to do is we're going to practice first and I do have a practice sheet and you're more than welcome to copy this one down. It will be on our website. What I did is I actually laminated mine so I could go in, practice, wipe off the icing, practice again, wipe off the icing. This way here I will always have it. Then what I can do is take what I've learned and apply it to my cake. One of the things you're going to need, and this is actually what I've done with the shell border, is tip 21. So if you did get a tip 21 and your medium icing, I want to show you how to stripe your bag to get that extra special look to it. So simple and, and it just adds that little bit of extra factor to that. Every time we go through a practice session, I would like you to stop and rewind the video, do it as many times as you feel you need to, but the biggest thing is, is just don't get frustrated. This is going to be fun and, and you will pick up these skills. I, I promise you, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I want to do is my medium icing. So what I've done, so that you didn't have to see me fill a bag again, was to get this striped look, I actually put in a color white and then a color pink. Then I took my two bags, I put them together, and I just cut the very end of the bag just enough so that I can get the icing to come out. Then what I've done is I've made another bag. Remember, we used the coupler. We put the coupler in the bag, then I put my tip on the outside, and this is my tip 21, and if you remember, it's an open star tip because it's all open, and then I put my coupler on there. Now sometimes your bags may not want to go in here so easy, so you kind of have to kind of squish them together just a little bit, but you want to get both of these to go right through that coupler nut. So you want to make sure that the both colors go in here because what's going to happen, and then you'll pull this up, and again, you don't want to fill it over half full. What's going to happen is as you squeeze it out, you'll, you'll start getting the two different colors because you have two different colors. Now you can also stripe a bag another way if you don't want it to be quite so intense is you can take your piping bag, we'll take this one right here. And you can take your colored icing and you can just go in here and just wipe it up the bag, put your icing on the other side and squeeze and then you'll just get a nice little thin line of color. So there's many different ways to, to uh, stripe a bag. One of the things is as we continue on, I'll give you different hits when we start doing roses because you want just a nice fine little thin line around it just to give it that little extra stuff. So not to overwhelm you right now, but this here I thought was so cool. And this is also great if you wanted to do cupcakes or something and you want to do that swirl and get two different colors. When we're practicing on our practice board, one of the things is, is bag positioning. Again, that is another one of the essentials. We already went through the icing consistencies, the thin, the medium, and the stiff. Those are very important. Now we're going to learn bag position and pressure control. All depends upon how much pressure you squeeze out as to how big something is going to become. When I go to just make a plain star, my bag is going to be straight up and down. Again, I'm using medium consistency icing. When I do this, all I'm going to do is lightly touch the surface or just above the surface. You don't want to if you're going to touch your surface, you don't want to just cram that, that tip in there. You just want to lightly touch the surface or you can even work off the surface, but just a little bit. Because what's going to happen is as you squeeze this out, wherever your tip goes is where your icing is going to go. So if it's high up off the surface like this, you're not going to get a very pretty star. If you have it touching the surface or just above, when you squeeze it and you stop squeezing it and you pull away, you get a different star. So this one here is just kind of a, a wad of icing. This here is a nice flat star. One of the things you want to do when you're starting out, again, is the pressure control. So you might need to count in your head so that you make sure all of your stars or shapes are consistent. So we're lightly touching the surface. My bag is straight up and down. And what I and sometimes I will even take and I'll hold my hand to steady it, or if I'm working with a flower nail, which you will learn if, in additional lessons, 
is I'll take and I'll rest it against my side or I'll take and I'll rest it this way. That way there I have control over it because you do need to have control over your icing and your design that you're making or it's not going to look very uniform and you're not going to get that professional look. So just above the surface, I'm going to squeeze and go one, two, three, stop squeezing and then I'm going to pull away. Now, if I'm not counting and I do this and then I do this, I'm not getting very, very uniform designs. Now, you can take a tip 21 and by, by squeezing it out more, obviously, you get a larger star. By not squeezing it so much, you get a, a smaller star. So whether you want the big stars or the smaller stars, whatever your squeeze control is, is, a, is how big they're going to get. Now, after you've practiced that, I want you to come back and we're going to learn how to take that star and make it a border, okay? So practice and when you're ready, come back and I'll see you then. Welcome back. I hope you had fun doing the stars. Now we're going to just take that and we're going to turn it into a shell border. What we're going to do, and our bag positioning is going to be a little different this time. We're still going to use our medium consistency icing, basically what you practiced with before. One hint though, if you notice when you're practicing and if you had hot hands, the icing consistency started changing. When that happens, you can either take your icing and put it in the refrigerator, or you can get another bag with some fresher icing and start again. It's just the heat of your hands is starting to melt the shortening and things that are in there and so th that sometimes will change your consistency a little bit. Okay, Just like if it's colder outside your icing may stiffen up a little bit more and, you're, and you, you may find that it's a little bit harder to squeeze out even though it's the same recipe you've been doing. So sometimes you may have to change it just a little bit. So to make your shell border I'm going to have my bag pointed at about six o'clock and I'm going to have it at a 45 degree angle. So if you're looking at, a, let, let's take the cake for instance. Let's say that this is a clock. You have noon, you have three, six, and nine. And those are pretty much going to be what the angles of your bag are going to be as far as the position. Angles are going to either be 90 degrees or they're going to be about 45 degrees. Okay, so we're at a 45 degree angle and the bag is positioned at six o'clock. Gonna be just above the surface because what we wanna do is get the icing to fan out just a little bit. And what I'll do is on this side so you can see it a little bit easier. Okay, we're gonna have the icing fan out. So and always make sure you clean your tip. You always wanna have a nice clean tip because you don't, just don't wanna have that extra icing hanging out. So then we're gonna, just above the surface, we're gonna squeeze, see how the icing's fanning out? And then we're gonna bring it down and then we're gonna stop squeezing and we're gonna pull away, okay? Now, because I striped my bag, I wanna make sure that my bag's in the proper position to see that because you can't really see my stripe there. So I wanna make sure that it's angled correctly. And that's why sometimes, even before I start to do a cake, I'll always practice first to make sure I'm self-checking myself and that my angles are correct also. So again, just above the surface, 45 degree angle, Squeeze and then we're going to bring it down gently and then once once your tip is hit the bottom Stop squeezing and we're going to pull it away. So we're not going to lift up like this What we're going to do is just Slightly above squeeze let the icing fan out keep squeezing as you bring it down when you touch the surface Stop squeezing and pull it away and you get that nice little tail then to continue the shell border, you're going to start just right underneath that tail, squeeze, keep squeezing as you bring it down, stop squeezing, and pull away. The sheet on our website, it's a very good sheet because these are actually pretty much true to size also. When you practice, have your practice board out. What we're going to do, remember, just above the surface, squeeze, let the icing fan out, bring it down, keep squeezing. Once you touch, pull it away. And then see they're starting right at the end of each other. So we're going to squeeze, let the icing fan out, bring it down and pull it away. Squeeze just above the surface, let the icing fan out, bring it down and pull it away. If you don't like that, then turn your bag because you have the striped bag and I didn't have my bag in the proper position. That's why it's important to practice. 
So here, squeeze. No, oh, see here, now we got it. And then we're gonna bring it down and pull away. So a squeeze, lift up, bring it down and pull away. And what's nice is if you either put this practice sheet in a sheet protector or laminate it like that, once you're done practicing, you just wipe it off and you can go back and do it again. So I'd like you to practice that so that we can apply that to our cake. And our next journey is gonna be making our little rosettes and making our swirl flower. Can't wait to see you back.